Our next guest has been on Focus Delaware before. Let's welcome the return of Andy Scarpati, president of Scarpati Productions, but better known as the owner of Cobbany Cabaret, located in downtown Wilmington. He's brought along one of his headliner comedians, so I'm told. Uh, the fellow is uh, one of your best, I understand, Andy. Is that correct? Well, he's trying to convince everyone of that. Bob, how you been? Fine. How are you, Andy? Fine. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us back on Focus Delaware. It's always a thrill to be here, Robert. Who's, there, who's this weekend on your show? This weekend we're having a special show. I'm glad you We're having our anniversary show at the Comedy Cabaret. Oh, I see. It's our five and a half month anniversary above the Greenery <laughs> Restaurant. We're having a special show, a comedian that's appeared on Saturday Night Live, the Merv Griffin Show, HBO specials, with a guy by the name of Bob Nelson, who's been around a few times to Wilmington and works the country and stuff like that. Plus, German's number one comedian, Klaus Meyer, and also, this gentleman to my left, you may have seen him on HBO cable TV, <laughs> the incomparable funny man, Dennis Wolfberg. Thank you uh, very much. Dennis, uh, I've seen you before at the Comedy Cabaret, and I found you were very instructional. I learned an awful lot about you on that show. Well, thank you, Bob. You were uh, very receptive and very good student, actually. As a matter of fact, not only were you instructional, but I understand your background is you were a school teacher when you first got your start as in your early career. Yes. Uh, I was a school teacher in part of New York City known as the South Bronx. That's, that's not like a playground there, is it? South Bronx, uh, depending on your, uh, your preferred style of play, I suppose, uh, is one of the toughest uh, communities in the entire universe. And uh, I taught for, uh, for 12 years in the South Bronx and then entered uh, into comedy. But what did you teach? Sixth grade. Sixth grade reading <laughs> was my main responsibility. You have the little children all day long, actually, and you are responsible for teaching everything. Uh, reading, of course, at the elementary level is your number one responsibility. And, uh, they talk about kids learning how to read. My kids had difficulty remembering my name, which is uh, <laughs> Wolfberg. You wouldn't think all that uh, difficult. Uh, kids call me Wolf Man, Wolf Trap. And, uh, <laughs> I had a kid uh, called Wolf Gang was a big one. Uh, first day of school, a kid uh, said, Hey, Wolf Gang, uh, we got homework tonight. And I said the name is not Wolf Gang, it's uh, Wolfberg. And what's more, it's Mr. Wolfberg. And the kid said, How am I supposed to know you're married? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> That's the first day of school, and then we kind of progress from there. Yeah. Well, um, how has teaching changed over the years, uh, looking back now in your perspective? They, the kids, as in every facet of our society, uh, it's tougher. People have no conception as to what it's like to teach, particularly in, a, in an urban setting. I, uh, 12 years, I'm proud. I'm not teaching anymore. Two years ago, I stopped to do this full time, and uh, uh, I was able to retire with much of my sanity intact. Uh, no noticeable facial tics uh, <laughs> or uncontrollable muscle spasms or anything. And uh, uh, the kids are tougher to deal with. Uh, they, they gave me the slow class, you see, for six consecutive years. Uh, now, these are regular kids. They're called slow. I used to think of them as stationary, actually, <laughs> and uh, motionless. But they were called slow. I had a, I had a kid, Frank Bailey, by way of example. Uh, Frank, uh, these are true kids, you see. And uh, uh, first day of school, again, we fill out standard roll book information. You remember when oh, uh, sure. you were yet a student, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Frank, tell me your birthday um, uh, for the roll book. He says, March the 21st. I said, what year? He says, uh, every year. <laughs> 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 so, uh, slow children. I had a uh, little girl, Kathleen Lewis. Uh, the kids are somewhat brutal with each other. Kathleen had a health problem. Um, what was that? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you can say it on TV. I'm certain it's part of everyday life. It's uh, not unlike the old Groucho show. It's something you see every day. Uh, she had kind of a, a chronic gastrointestinal disorder. And, uh, I see. Yes. Uh, <laughs> not uncommon at the sixth grade level, I suppose. She used to emit prodigious. Uh, amounts of gas uh, during the course of the day uh, uh, and on a good day she could activate a smoke alarm actually and uh, <laughs> uh, and the other kids are really uh, nothing short of merciless they, they used to call it earth wind and fire <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was an example uh, it's not easy not easy you learn various things you learn uh, when I first started out I used to be able to give fill-in questions you remember when we were kids, we'd get fill-in questions when the teacher... Oh, they were my favorites. Yeah. Yes. Were they really? Oh, sure. Yeah, not multiple choice? No, no, I preferred the fill-in questions. Ah, see, well, at the beginning of my career, 12 long years ago, I would do the fill-ins, but then you finally, you learn that uh, occasionally you will get tests back with nothing correct. And uh, <laughs> after having labored uh, uh, very vigorously to instruct these little children, uh, this can be 
kind of discouraging. So you give multiple choice questions because even if they don't know anything, uh, they can randomly guess a couple, right? And you can say, I'm teaching pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, occasionally we'll give what we call control questions. You see, these are, every teacher does this. Teachers out there will know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, these are questions that are rather easy, just to see if the kids have any idea what you're talking about. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, multiple choice, which one does not belong? Okay, you can take uh, this with me. Okay. Uh, Magellan, Balboa, Columbus, and Morris the Cat. <laughs> okay, now that, <laughs> it's not a challenging, you, they don't all get that right, you see. They don't. Well, uh, you wouldn't believe how many kids selected Magellan, and uh, I asked one of them why, and he said, two L's. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of logic uh, you are dealing with. When we were kids, do you remember when we were kids, we would get the, we would get the multiple choice questions that were designed to drive us nuts. Uh, we would get, do you remember these? Uh, uh, it's, I grew up in New York and we would get them like this. This would be choice A, choice B, choice C, and then D would be A and B, but not C. Do you remember these? And oh, yes. E would be A and C, but not B, and F would be A, C, E, and your mother. And you know, <laughs> walk out of there, you know, uh, shaking. But, uh, but you learn these things, and uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. For, it's a noble profession to teach. Uh, it's uh, just a, I'll tell you another way in which it's changed. Uh, sex education is, is taught. Now, did you have sex education when you were in school? <coughs> well, we had a gym teacher who showed us a movie, and he was just embarrassed the whole time, would walk off and then come back in when the movie was over. That in was gym. the extent of in it. Gym. In gym, When yes. I was in high school, I went to Herrick's High School in Long Island. We, they, they, in high school, they would approach the subject of sex, but during health class, which is not unlike the gym, instruction you had, and they would separate the women from, from the guys. Oh, of course. The girls would go off and watch health movies uh, for women, like the joys of the menstrual cycle. <laughs> A great <laughs> flick, by the way. And, uh, uh, and then they would tell the guys what was in it. And uh, uh, it's misleading, you see, uh, this sort of education. Today, we, we begin giving them at fourth grade in the city system. It's, as a sixth grade teacher, uh, I was responsible for teaching everything, and they're young, they're children, you know, they're sixth grade. Think back to when you were in sixth grade and what you knew. Uh, we were also instructed uh, to answer their questions, because to avoid any of their questions is to imply that the subject is dirty, you see. And uh, they ask sometimes stupid questions. They're children, you know, uh, during one lesson when I taught them that reproduction is when the sperm fertilizes the egg, uh, one of the kids asked, is it possible for the sperm to fertilize an omelet? <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> uh, good question. I, uh, it's not really uh, too far from logic. And uh, I, I said, yeah. <laughs> and you get baby's Benedict. <laughs> uh, Makes sense. So uh, uh, kids are always kids, but it is more challenging, more difficult today. Did you become a comedian because you were a failure as a teacher? <laughs> Very diplomatically <laughs> asked, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, my children. If I get right to the point. My children actually uh, conducted a petition requesting that I find some new occupation, and uh, I, I'd always wanted to be a comedian. Uh, I, I think many of us in this profession are kind of uh, we're stage struck, we're star struck, and there's uh, uh, it's hard to explain what's in. But I always, in the back of my mind, wanted to be a teacher and uh, uh, to be a comedian. And uh, after having taught for about nine years I decided uh, let's give it a go and so I would uh, I would then go into the clubs in New York City and 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 uh, do my best under some uh, difficult circumstances until I uh, got good enough to start to make a living have you ever bombed out on stage excuse me really bombed out on stage uh, uh, everyone <laughs> has what you call bombed out on stage uh, as you get better it becomes less and less frequent I recently had maybe the toughest gig I ever had they booked me to play a hospital uh, opening for Ann Miller, Sugar Babies in New York, the Veterans Administration Hospital. A very appropriate booking for a comedian, I thought, a hospital. Nice people in the audience, but they were ill. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and some of them had tubes <laughs> coming in and out of them, and it's hard for a person to laugh uh, when a good laugh might dislodge him from his life support system, I suppose. And, uh, as comedians, we have to deal with everything. Um, heckling, I, I can deal with its hemorrhaging. <laughs> throws my timing <laughs> off. I, you tell a joke and a guy spitting up blood. It's, uh, I, can, I uh, asked one guy uh, in the audience, where are you from? And he said, intensive care. I said, thank you very much. Uh, so that was maybe the toughest job I ever had. Uh, has being on the road affected your social life at all? 
Uh, well, we are on the road uh, last week, and it does wreak uh, havoc uh, with my social life. I scored last week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I have pictures to prove uh, there of uh, later for you people in our studio audience. Uh, uh, yes, I'm. Uh, we're on the road. Uh, I suppose it's a double-edged sword. That's what uh, this level of the business is for me. For example, this week I'm in Wilmington. You see. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, is now, that a hot spot? Uh, Wilmington. Uh, uh, oh yes, <laughs> yeah, everyone. And, uh, and next week I go to Atlanta, and the uh, following week uh, Cleveland, and uh, various other places. So the social life is kind of ragtag. We uh, you try to make friends on the road, and uh, I'm not married yet, so uh, it's not a question where I break up uh, uh, my family. Yeah, I uh, I look forward to marriage. I, I, I'm rather old for have uh, to have never been married, uh, uh, and that presents problems. Uh, you are under suspect from uh, the parents of some of the women you date who assume you'll never get married. I, I went out with a girl, Debbie Rothenberg, uh, Roslyn Heights, Long Island, and you talk about pressure, our fifth date, her father had the nerve to ask me what my intentions were, and I said, uh, fifth date? I said, Mr. Rothenberg, this is the fifth time I'm dating your daughter, I intend to score. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> uh, touchdown. Uh, it's not, oh. Didn't go over too well. Well, uh, for a fellow who's 60 years old, you look pretty well. Uh, now, well, thank, thank you for coming you on our very show. Much. And uh, Andy, uh, we'll tell the people we can see Dennis and uh, Dennis, crew this weekend. Bob Nelson, Germany's number one comedian, this weekend at the Comedy Cabaret. Sounds Hope. like a commercial. Thanks for having us on, Bob. Hope you'll catch that. Uh, we'll go to some short messages, tell them, and then we'll be back with more Focus Delaware. Uh, we'll be back here uh, to be uh, focusing on Focus Delaware more. <laughs>